One of the marquee free additions boasted by all the Skyrim Anniversary Edition marketing was the ability to now go fishing. Our new fishing mode is a complete waste of time. Well, I hate to break it to you if you haven't tried it, but it's complete dog ass. I won't be too hard on the side activity right now because I don't have too much time for it. I've been enjoying a break away from YouTube to focus on my personal life, but really I've just been spending hours every day playing Bethesda's first person shooter Brink all day, every day, instead of searching for a job like a normal functioning adult should be. Since since the fishing activity in Skyrim is nigh on useless, aside from using the fishing rod as a weapon, I thought it would be fun to be the first YouTuber to beat the game using nothing but a- Wait, wh what do you mean Nerbert already did it? In that video? He didn't put fishing rod in the title, right? I'm obviously joking, I love Nerbit's content, and you should absolutely subscribe to his channel, but after fighting off the disappointment 10 minutes into this challenge that somebody I respect beat me to the punch, I woke up once again to the sweet sound of Rayloff's voice, because nothing says fun time like waking up in a stranger's carriage, handcuffed and immediately being told, hey, we're on our way to go fishing. I can't lie, if fishing is still as boring as it was when I was a child, then I'd almost rather get my head lopped off by the Empire. I wanted every advantage possible going into this run, because like I said, I'm short on time and Thanksgiving is quickly approaching so I'll be away with my family. If you're doing anything special for the holiday, I'd love to hear. If you're not, maybe get some friends. It helps ease the pain of loneliness. I decided that an orc would be the most effective race to use for this playthrough because their berserker ability would be crucial for making me much more viable in combat. I can double my damage output and half my damage intake once per day in game. I also chose an orc because let's be honest, if I asked you which Elder Scrolls race looks the most like a fish, which would you respond with? Because I have no sense of honor or integrity, I used console commands to give myself a fishing rod right away. After angling my way through several empire lackeys and spiders, the world was now my oyster. That's not the last of fishing puns. I'll definitely try to write more in this video as we go along. I took the warrior stone because the main skills I want to focus on are one-handed, heavy armor, and restoration, with one-handed being the main one that I focus on, but we'll realize later that that was a mistake and I probably should have focused on heavy armor. Moving on. I went ahead and speed ran the worst relationship in Elder Scrolls history so that Feindall could join our team. Congratulations on your new relationship, founded upon lies, Feindall. This is why no one respects Wood Elves. For your reward and bravery, you now get to follow around this strange orc fisherman who no less than 20 minutes ago was about to have his head cut off. We pressed on to Bleak Falls Barrow, and I'm not gonna lie, this portion was way easier than I thought. I fought a few enemies because finishing kills with what is essentially a tool that mothers use to threaten discipline never gets old. But also because I know eventually the difficulty is gonna ramp up in the story missions and I want to level those three crucial skills I mentioned earlier. The final Draugr wasn't easy, but this is Skyrim, and let's not fool ourselves and say that most enemies can't be beat with some cheese and cowardly tactics. Determined to finish this adventure so I can get back to my planned fishing trip, we sped over to Whiterun and passed the easiest speech check in gaming history. Operating on a fisherman's income is tough, so I know we can be resourceful. The Jarl knows this too, as he awards me with a fresh new set of steel armor. Useful, but underwhelming for trolling through a dungeon and beating everyone senseless with a twig. At this point, the hardest part of the challenge is waiting for and skipping all the dialogue. Not that it's bad, it's bad, but that I know I'm betraying my core tenant of a successful fisherman by being impatient, though I'm pretty sure that's just my undiagnosed ADHD kicking in. I'm actually surprised that Feindal has still stuck with us to this point. He really is carrying most of the combat encounters so far and is naive enough to believe that Sven isn't railing Camilla while he's away. We're actually just giving him the American military experience, except he doesn't get healthcare benefits or education. I finally get to take on my deadliest catch as a dragon faces his worst nightmare. A wooden Shimano fishing Terramar northeast 76 meter central standard time saltwater inshore casting pole. I wish that was today's sponsor, but instead we're stuck with whatever ads YouTube decides to throw in your face. Okay, dragon is dead, shout is acquired, but a good fisherman never disturbs the fish, so unless required for story advancement purposes, no shouting from this orc. I felt it best to fire Feindal at this point, not because I sympathize with his domestic issues, but because it'll make it that much funnier when I steal his girlfriend in the future. Lydia? You're hired. For the purpose of making this run as easy as possible, Lydia seemed like the better option of the two, and plus, who could say no to that face? Now, I don't know any speedrun strategies whatsoever for this game, so hoofing it on foot to the Greybeards was my only option. The only thing worse than this walk up the mountain was having to listen to these old hags talk for another 30 minutes straight. Generally, I'd be upset about old people talking endlessly about boring topics I don't care about, but this is great practice for Thanksgiving dinner. The Horn of Jurgmen Jungchaler. I'm not gonna lie, we kind of ran through this dungeon avoiding fights mainly because Lydia decided to phase out of existence like my father's love for me and I was left all by myself. Well, we made it through, but not without bonking some skeletons. Why does he get the throne? 
After that dungeon, I'm supposed to be finding Delphine here in Riverwood so he can continue our quest, but all hell decided to break loose. First, a fan and a subscriber of Fishing Magazine approached me with his fanfiction, something about a flounder, and then some cultists showed up. I think they were anti-fishing propagandists, but a terrorist attack decided to take place on Riverwood that day. Look, I get paid to catch sea bass and look cool doing it, not save a town from cultists or save a country from dragons. But the townspeople did decide to jump into the fight and defend me, and you know what? I respect that. Alas, it was a hard fight, but not without its losses. You guys all had my back and I was... Alvor! I can't believe Alvor is dead. I've been looking for you. I really can't escape my fans, can I? I've got a letter and a lot of gold. Something about it being your, uh, oh, inheritance. In the name of Jarl Bulgriff the Greater, it is with great regret that we inform you of Feindal's death. Yep. Through all that craziness, we lost Feindal. Truly, I feel bad. We created his relationship with Camilla based on lies, and then snatched it right from him within an instant. I wish for us all to convene now in a moment of silence over the death of the brave warrior Feindal. Gone too soon before he ever had a chance at Camilla. At least this means she's all mine after the main story is over. Okay, moving on. Ah, yes, Delphine, you terrible thing. You, if ever there was a time to go on that fishing trip I've been planning and accidentally let you fall into the lake, it's right now. Delphine is horrid, but she helps us advance the story and continue whacking things with our sticks, so, uh... I guess she's cool for now. In the interest of brevity, we bop this dragon with Delphine and then get to attend a Thalmor dinner party so I can eavesdrop about details concerning the next Thalmor fly fishing tournament. This was the first instance where I was severely challenged by the combat during this run. There's a few unavoidable encounters, but the hardest was in the basement as I got jumped by several Thalmor at once. The strategy here was to use my berserker power we mentioned earlier and to find windows within the embassy that I could wait for 24 hours to reset the ability. I know it's total cheese and if you hate that, I get it, but cheese is a type of fishing bait. This strategy helped me win the initial fight in the basement, but a second attack takes place which I wasn't ready for. There's a small window of time between the first fight and second fight in which I could use the 24 hour cheese to reset my power, but in order to take advantage of it, I had to start this entire fight all over again. Thankfully, I was able to push through, and now I am one step closer to achieving my dream goal of saving the country and attaining freedom to fish in peace. At this point, I'm now level 7, and I've focused most of my points into heavy armor and one-handed. I wish I had a joke about these stats and how they relate to the life of a fisherman, but coming up with these on the fly isn't easy. Why don't you try? Collecting Esbern is next on our list, and this was pretty straightforward. We found Esbern, we went back to Riverwood, and... What? You left him on his own? I get him a fisherman, but catch and release on the elderly is not something I had planned, so I went all the way back to Esbern, found him in the tunnels, fought off some more Thalmor, and had him back in Riverwood. This run is starting to become a pain, because between each of these quests, the fights are really becoming a grind. I avoid a lot, but some are necessary, and I really don't want to hamstring myself for required fights near the end of the game, but I also want to complete this in a decent amount of time, otherwise I'm going to be red-eyeing this edit until 6am the day I release it which is what I'm currently doing now. We still have discovering the Blade's home base, learning the Dragon Dren shout, finding an Elder Scroll, and getting lost in Blackreach. But I just listed all of those off, so let's count them as complete, shall we? Now, the Alduin fight genuinely felt like when I tried to reel in a fish as a kid for the first time. This was an absolute grind, and I nearly died multiple times. I'm still comparing this to my first time fishing. I did nearly die that day, but not from anything in the water. It was because I threw a massive hissy fit and I thought my father was gonna throw me overboard. I was an annoying five-year-old. I used nearly every potion in my inventory I had saved up until this point to stay alive. Lydia was useless again, but eventually we grinded Alduin down and we took the crown. As a representative of Bass Pro Shops, beating Cabela's in one-on-one -on -one combat was a huge morale boost for the team, but we still had plenty of work to do. In order to cast a net and legitimately do the most comparable thing to actual fishing in the entire Skyrim storyline, we had to negotiate a peace treaty between the Empire and the Stormcloaks. Ah yes, the Civil War negotiations that get decided solely by a strange orc fisherman who has quite literally only been in the country for a week or two. Again, another scene of unskippable dialogue that almost put me to sleep, and at the end of it all, my game broke. I had to go and sit through the entire meeting all over again. It was awful. The very least what I got out of this meeting was the Empire controls Riften now. It's a popular fishing port, so after the main story is over, I have a side to choose in the Civil War when all things are said and done. My fishing withdrawal is getting to the point where I'm willing to spring a trap on a dragon just to feel something. So we capture Odaving, who up close looks like a Bionicles character, and right off to face our final challenge. I want to say real quick at this point, I know the footage at times has been really blurry and I apologize for that. You see, Twitch is a garbage platform sometimes, and my final footage came out terrible in certain 
important parts. It was so bad during this final section that I had to call it quits for the night. In one sitting, we went from the start of the game all the way to the final quest, using nothing but a fishing rod for our primary weapon. I was disappointed, to say the least. I watched my line jiggle and the catch take my line and run with it. Even worse, when I caught the fish, he was mangled and rendered in like 240p anyway. But I digress. The single hardest battle was just before the final section. Multiple dragons, tons of Draugr, and a dragon priest. It was so chaotic I employed a take one out, run back inside, and wait 24 hours to regain my ability strategy before the stream eventually fully died. I went into this part with no potions because Alduin took them all, so I was genuinely worried I was upstream without a paddle, but after reloading my save the next day to finish this off, something strange happened. I went outside and the Draugr weren't nearly as high of numbers as they were before, the dragon priest was injured and not even attacking me. I think I unintentionally broke something in this area, but I've been so exhausted from bopping people mindlessly with the worst weapon in the game that I took it for what it was and pushed forward. Getting to this moment in the game, I felt really accomplished for the first time this whole run. I haven't felt like this since I won a handwriting contest by default in the fourth grade. Remember to work on your penmanship, kids. It's how you get all the girls. It really hit me while I was in Sovngarde. This looks like a beautiful place to fish. I almost want Alduin to win so I can die and chill here with my Nordic friends and catch salmon all week. But unfortunately, an NBA center wants to kill me. I lied when I said the last section was the toughest because this fight was damn near impossible without potions. I was about ready to give up, continually checking his health and estimating my progress and my odds of success like I'm C-3PO when suddenly, he gave up. This was all just a test to see if I was powerful enough to enter into the Hall of Heroes, which, let's be real, it's kind of funny that an orc named Thomas randomly rolled up to this country, avoided execution, grabbed the fishing pole, and now he's being treated as royalty by Nordic god warriors. It's almost poetry in a sense. The Odyssey and the Iliad don't have shit on the Thomas. This is it. The final showdown. At around five and a half hours, I was on the doorstep of facing the toughest challenge yet. Just kidding. This fight is actually incredibly easy. You know, for a guy named World Eater, Alduin sure does go down like a paper lunch bag. I didn't technically speedrun this game, but my final time was about 5 hours and 20 minutes from start to finish. So if you want to challenge me, good luck. Regardless of whatever time you get, you'll never be as cool as Thomas. Thomas.